see you guys again. We really, really, really need your help. And we really need to put it to work. There are so many people that need it. We're going to be over here at the table. Feel free to come up and talk to us, Francisco or I, or any of our volunteers. Thank you all so much for your support. Too. grandmother was incarcerated at Idaho's Minidoka concentration camp during World War II. Lauren Yoshiko is a mixed Japanese-American writer. Both Lauren have just returned and her grandmother have just returned from a yearly pilgrimage to Minidoka. Please welcome them to the stage now. My name is Lauren Yoshiko Terry, and I'm a Japanese American fifth generation board leader. My grandma couldn't be here tonight, but she is in spirit and also just in Northeast, and it's very late for her to drive. <laughs> but Joni Teruko Nakayama, my grandma, she is from Portland, but we had very different childhoods. Was, when she was three, she was taken to a concentration camp. In 1942, Executive Order 9066 enabled the government to essentially require my family and any Japanese American on the West Coast and beyond and those of the Japanese ancestry to change their lives, to liquidate their lives into what they could carry and head to something called an camp. My family in Portland had two weeks. Other people had more time, others had less, to sell their car, their business, their house, any possessions, and basically take pennies on the dollar for things that they've worked their entire lives to build. My family was lucky to have some white like, friends in Portland that took a trunk of our family heirlooms, so I have kimonos and Bokichi dolls from my ancestors, but a lot of people didn't have that. And although we had somebody to hold our stuff, there wasn't anybody stopping the law enforcement from taking all the Japanese Americans in Portland and putting them in the Expo Center for four months. And no one said anything when they put them on a train and 8,000 other families, 8,000 other people from the Northwest area headed to Minidoka Relocation Camp Concentration Camp, essentially. The windows were blacked out. My grandma doesn't remember anything. And America ended up allowing 120,000 people of Japanese descent to go into these places for three years. Wow. Uh, we let people be robbed of their lives, robbed of their homes, uh, robbed of a sense of the future that they worked for their entire lives and that their American-born parents have worked for their entire lives. They were robbed of a sense of freedom and of humanity. Now, my grandma had no perception of that because she was three at the time. But this last weekend we went together as grown women and experienced that. And although she was three years old and any stories she's ever told us were stories from my great grandmother, when we arrived there to the Minidoka site, just out of Twin Falls, Idaho, when our car rolled over those train tracks, that were the same train tracks that she felt bump underneath them as they started to slow down somewhere, she felt something come back. She remember the sense of fear, knowing that something was not right. When my great-grandmother leaned down, held her really tight, and looked her dead in the eye, and said, Joni, this is where we're going to live now. You need to remember our family number, 15259. Say it back to me, 15259. Because if we get separated, you're going to need that to find me. My grandma was three. She, she has a sense of that fear, though. And when I think about my great-grandmother, Kyo, being a young mother, younger than me, having no idea what's about to happen next when that train stops moving, having no idea how long we're going to be there or if they're going to see a uh, departure at any point. She didn't know if people knew where they were or if anyone cared. 70 years ago, I would have been sent to camp. My friends would have been sent to camp. And the question is whether I would have had somebody say something for me. The same sort of fear looking like the perceived enemy or, or like a perceived threat is what's bringing out the worst in Americans right now. 
And this time, maybe we can see ourselves and the people at the border a little sooner than later. Maybe we can see and recognize and learn from the nauseating similarities between today and these things that happen, these shameful, shameful, remorseful things, and see this ignorance and unethical mistake for what it is in time to make it right. Thank you. Let's see those lights up and those signs up and repeat after us. Never again is now. Never again. Never again is now. 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 Thank you, Rabbi Devar will be leading us now in reflective meditation prior to lighting our lights and into a moment of silence.